so hi everyone. Um, my name is Daniel. I work with uh, Nervous Network, and uh, we're first. We're first. We're a UTXO chain that has a layer one and also has a layer two, which is EVM compatible. We are pro we are probably operating a first uh, EVM compatible optimistic rollup on a UTXO chain uh, since like probably half a year um, right now. So we deployed last version. Um, of this of this rollup last year, but we have a new version that's that's ready in testnet and will be coming um, in two months probably uh, to mainnet. So yeah, I will speak about um, this optimistic rollup and our challenges building this optimistic EVM compatible rollup uh, on the UTXO chain. So I'm in the blockchain space since uh, 2017. Previously, I worked for uh, Ethereum alarm clock. Um, Polymath, so it was like security tokens and Energy Web Foundation, which was uh, energy and blockchain. So first, I'll talk a little bit about our layer one because it's very important um, when we are looking at our layer two, especially the virtual machine that we have on our layer one. Um, so yeah, then we'll talk about the layer two. So first, what is a Nervous Network? So everything we build here is uh, coded from scratch. Uh, we have our re own research team, uh, own developers, and yeah, they design it. Uh, our top researcher, uh, he used to work uh, in the Ethereum Foundation. Uh, at the time, I, th I believe he worked um, uh, on sharding, and then he left, I guess, in 2019 uh, to build this own, to build this uh, his own blockchain, uh, Nervous. And um, the idea was to build Nervous uh, from the ground up. With this, like you know, layered architecture in mind, not actually like like in Ethereum, it was built like probably we didn't know that we will have like many layers when the Ethereum was built. Uh, so so that was built with like this layered architecture in mind. So yeah, we are we are a proof of work. Uh, we believe it's the the most tested and secure at this point. We're also a UTXO chain. We have smart contracts capabilities. Uh, we already have. Uh, mainnet applications on our uh, UTXO layer one chain. And uh, we're apparently there's only 11 active blockchain projects that were published on uh, top security conferences in the world. And we are uh, one of them. There are others like uh, Arbitrum, Cardano, Bitcoin, and uh, yeah. So yeah, we were built with this uh, layered architecture in mind uh, from the ground up. Everything was coded in uh, Rust, actually. And yeah, our layer one is supposed to be very minimal, just for like a verification. There's no like state generation on, on our layer one. Um, it's a UTXO chain. And uh, we leave everything, the, the state generation, we leave it for the layer two. It was, our layer one was designed like this. And uh, yeah, so it's supposed to be minimal and just a place uh, where we anchor our, all the layer two solutions. And really interesting thing, which is different to, to what people talked yesterday and today, and uh, even Optimism mentioned uh, Risk Five. So the Optimism is running their, they, they cloned Geth, and they're running it on IAP, MIPS uh, Risk uh, virtual machine. We actually, and they mentioned Risk Five. So we actually have Risk Five on our layer one uh, in mainnet, and this is where we deploy EVM. Uh, which uh, secures our um, our optimistic rollup on layer two. That's why we inherit security uh, from our layer one. We we are still uh, our rollup also has training wheels, um, like uh, it was said on the panel yesterday. But uh, we obviously have a plan to to decentralize it. So yeah, it's a risk five. So you can potentially de deploy different VMs, not only Ethereum. But I don't know, let's say some other ecosystem explodes or we want to, you know, um, yeah, just enable people to interact between like EVM applications and maybe some other virtual machine applications. So, so that's our goal, basically. Um, yeah, we can plug in uh, anything. So Godoken is the current name of our optimistic rollup that's already on mainnet. Uh, we have like 80 million uh, TVL and uh, so, so the key features and the vision for our rollup is to actually 
enable users to just use the wallet they are actually using today. So for example, we can imagine that, for example, we have Ethereum user and you know this person only uses his MetaMask. So we want this person to just go to any DAP and be able to use a MetaMask wallet and you know, so minimal friction, um, best UX uh, for people. And the same goes, for example, for, let's say, a Cardano or Tron. So, you know, there's a Cardano user, Cardano user has Cardano wallet. He goes to this application and, you know, is just able to use the Cardano wallet while interaction with the when interacting with this application. And this is also possible because, so we verify, we have very flexible architecture of our rollup. So we can do this like different cryptographic um, verifications on our layer one because it's just like risk 5 so risk 5 is just like uh, uh, standard for uh, instructions of the processor i believe and it's widely adopted uh, beyond blockchain space right so i think it's really important because we can uh, we can import rust libraries on our layer 1 so we don't have to code everything from scratch we can uh, we can reuse um, so yeah, actually, on one of the previous presentations, uh, one of our developers uh, deployed uh, JavaScript, uh, duct tape. This is like a version that compiles to Risk Five, and uh, people were able to just, you know, uh, build JavaScript uh, smart contracts in addition to to Rust. Or this was actually running on Layer Two, so in addition to uh, EVM. So this is really interesting. And uh, yeah, the idea is to also have like different wallets. And uh, so how our optimistic rollup is built, actually, we are using Ethereum uh, C++ implementation that compiles to RISC-V. And yeah, this is deployed uh, on our layer one. Yeah, this is just, um, I don't want to talk about the same things as other people talked uh, on in the other presentations. This is just like a di basic diagram how the you know, block production works and how it's committed later to uh, layer one. So we deployed our uh, mainnet Goodwoken, mainnet optimistic rollup last year. And there are some lessons that I want to share with you. So our first version was called V0. So yeah, we started counting from zero. And we were 95% EVM compatible, but it wasn't enough. Um, because we found all these teams that wanted to build applications uh, on our EVM network, they really needed like very close to 100% because you know they are maybe using some calls, some RPCs, and, and stuff like this. And if it turns out that if you don't build something that's like almost exactly as compatible as Ethereum, then you know they have to rewrite their code and they pr maybe not necessarily uh, want to do uh, this kind of stuff. So instead of like so it was easier for us just to build something that's more EVM compatible, and that's what we did. Uh, we already have more compatible solution that's already in testnet, and uh, and yeah, it will probably be on mainnet in like a few months. Um, yeah, so this was the most important lesson. And yeah, our security model right now is um, so we we are optimistic roll up. But we are we still have like a centralized uh, sequencer, so we have a we obviously want to decentralize it. For our mainnet, we are running mainnet beta, so actually deploying smart contracts is whitelisted. So you you have to apply through a form, and then we allow you to deploy smart contracts. And yeah, we already have like some dexes running there. Uh, for example, people can bridge from Ethereum on mainnet uh, to our layer two chain, to our layer one, then to our layer two chain, and it all works uh, on the UTXO chain. Um, one of the things that I want to also mention for UTXO chains, why um, optimistic rollup, EVM compatible optimistic rollup is is more important for them maybe than even for Ethereum, is on a UTXO chain you have a different programming model than in Ethereum because Ethereum is like account based model, and all the programmers are used to. Um, yeah, just programming solidity and use this account based model. Um, where they have this like state that can be changed multiple times in the same block, and in UTXO it's really different uh, way of programming. That's that's why we see like, for example, Cardano is also a UTXO chain, and 
you know, it's a it's a new ecosystem. People need to learn how to build uh, smart contracts uh, on the UTXO chains, and uh, yeah, this is uh, this is a challenge uh, in itself. So yeah, right now uh, we are we only allow like authorized like um, sequencers to operate. In reality, we have a single sequencer right now uh, who's producing blocks. Um, we have a challenge system. We have a logic for a challenging uh, in place, but we actually um, didn't um, because it's it's still like not not everything is is uh, decentralized yet. Um, but yeah, in theory, it should be implemented already. A challenge uh, system and uh, and slashing. So yeah, we are going uh, step by step here. It was already a huge challenge for us to like build all these inf interfaces because we didn't clone Geth. And so, for example, we had to build all the RPCs, all the APIs, and stuff like this. So first, we spent like two years building our mainnet, a UTXO chain. Then we basically spent another two years uh, building our optimistic rollup that's EVM compatible. So right now, we can really just focus on uh, getting uh, projects uh, to build on this uh, stuff. So yeah, why you should care? Uh, we are working with uh, some other UTXO chains, um, and um, yeah, it, yesterday, for example, on the presentations, there were also some ideas by people from Ethereum Foundation and uh, Arbitrum and Fuel Labs how we can how we can scale Ethereum f further and the challenges that are uh, blocking us right now. And one of the things that were mentioned was like uh, paralyzing uh, computation. So we already have this, at least in our layer one, because we are a UTXO chain. So uh, the access list that were mentioned in the opening keynote, uh, we have this by default. And uh, and the second thing was from the yesterday's presentations was a state rent uh, for a state. So we have like storage. Uh, basically, on our chain, you have to pay for every byte. Uh, you log bytes when you deploy a smart contract. And then you de facto pay for it because we have inflation. So, um, so yeah, we have a state rent uh, mechanism. And yeah, we are working with with uh, top UTXO blockchains in the space to address some common challenges uh, for our layer one. Yeah, as I said, uh, we have a state rent mechanism uh, implemented. So yeah, uh, we just are going through the hard fork right now. We upgraded our RISC V uh, virtual machine. Um, on layer one, you program in Rust. So basically, the current hard fork enables you to just you know uh, use more features um, in Rust programming language. We are focusing. We want to build uh, another side chain this year, specifically focused, uh, for example, on gaming. Yeah, we are. We try to be a future-proof blockchain, so really not like only looking at EVM, but also looking at what future can bring. That's why we have this uh, very flexible virtual machine that we can deploy various stuff uh, there. And uh, yeah, we already have some uh, bridges like Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain. We are working very hard on the Cardano bridge, but it's uh, not not easy. And def we really want to focus on this um, this year. And yeah, we want to also support multiple locks. Um, this is just like example of like Cardano lock working on our uh, testnet. We were also looking at the Bitcoin Taproot upgrade, which gives some more like smart contract abilities to the Bitcoin protocol. We also partially implemented this on our protocol because we, as we said, we are just we have this this virtual machine, and uh, yeah, so we an invite anyone to to build on our chain. We have uh, hackathons, grants, accelerator program, and yeah, just looking to to kickstart this ecosystem. As uh, as someone from Diversify mentioned before, um, there are like two approaches if you build new uh, EVM ecosystem. One is you can just like port these applications and you know spend money on getting them to your chain, or you can become a hub like Cosmos is doing. Right? For us, I think we we really want to become a hub. Uh, and uh, have the best UX where you know people just can stick to their wallets and uh, and we still don't we don't want to sacrifice security. We believe it's really important. And also, I have seen some projects um, 
presented on these stages around these conferences, you know, taking compromise in security. And the audience was always like uh, very harsh on on like all the security compromises. So I think especially for, for this audience, it, it really matters. So we don't want to compromise on this um, at any layer, basically. But it's a step-by-step -step journey. So yeah, it's, it's already, our rollup is already working. It's on mainnet. There will be new version coming more EVM compatible. Uh, yeah, just join our community and maybe learn more about UTXO chains. And I think this is also interesting the direction that wasn't mentioned too much. Um, but I know some companies are using UTXO. I think Aztec, uh, we talked yesterday under the hood and the uh, fuel labs as well is using some form of uh, UTXO. I don't fully understand every, every detail, every technical detail. But yeah, UTXO, smart contracts and that kind of stuff is also around. So probably worthwhile to keep an eye on it. So yeah, more bridges, more wallets, more decentralization, potentially ZK. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Questions? Hi. Um, so you mentioned you have a concept for state rent, right? Yes. And you're talking to the Ethereum Foundation. Do you think some of the concept that you have can be integrated into like uh, yeah, an Ethereum type network or so we we are not I don't think we are in contact with Ethereum Foundation. Our top researcher worked there uh, a few years ago, but then then he left. I think he was working on sharding back then, but then the whole idea for sharding in Ethereum, I think it was changed. Uh, right now we are looking at a different sharding, which was mentioned multiple times yesterday, like this uh, protobank sharding and uh, more like modular roll-up architecture. So um, I think that that might be inevitable for to in, for like in future for Ethereum to introduce some kind of like state rent, but uh, we are unfortunately not in talks with, with Ethereum. Uh, and do you think this mechanism, so you didn't really talk how this mechanism works, but I remember that Nervous was kind of advertising this a lot in the beginning because it was kind of special that you focused on this, uh, that your token is also like focused on this idea of um, paying for state instead of focusing on computation. Yeah, I think that's important. I think, I'm not sure who mentioned this, a uh, few labs or, or someone else, but, you know, yesterday there was this example of uh, gas token on Ethereum, right? And I didn't even know that the state grew from like, I don't know, 30 gigabytes to 100 gigabytes just, just because of this token, right? So because we built the layer one protocol from scratch, from the ground up by our researcher, we have custom consensus, mo consensus model, a custom hash function, and... Uh, we were able to see the challenges that Ethereum had already. So we have this like, you know, state random. So basically you lock, like, let's say your smart contract takes 10 bytes, you have to lock it uh, when you deploy it. When you destroy it, you get, can get your like 10 bytes uh, tokens back. And uh, you pay because there's like an inflation mechanism, 3%. But yeah, I don't want to talk about tokenomics because I don't want to like advertise our project specifically. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Uh, and to clarify, that the state rent only works on layer one, not the rollup. Right? Yeah, yeah. We have a lot of people from community asking about like the state rent, like like how would this work on layer two? And they have like lots of amazing ideas, but we didn't implement uh, any mechanisms uh, yet. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much.